On this week's show, we take a look at the growing popularity of Canvas pop-ups, pop-outs, room extensions, and even individual add-ons. Also, Michelle and Lori show us what can happen when you decide to leave your dogs out of their crate while you're gone, even if it's just for a few minutes. Then later, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us how they built this cool carport for their RV from a kit. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, where available, is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. Today's RV designers are finding some creative ways to give us more living space in our RVs, and how they're achieving that is what's interesting. In some cases, they're expanding up, or expanding out, and occasionally adding a room where none existed before, and they're doing this with a centuries-old material, canvas. Now, this is not the canvas our forefathers used under covered wagons and tents, but lighter, stronger canvas. And in some cases, the material being used isn't even canvas, but high-tech vinyl and nylon fabrics. While attending this past RV industry open house, we couldn't help but notice all of these canvas additions. So, we decided to take a closer look at what some of these companies are offering now. Currently, most of these canvas extensions and add-ons are being used on smaller camping and travel trailers, along with a few Class B motorhomes. But, larger trailers and toy haulers are expanding up and out also, especially on the rear tailgate decks with some nice enclosed screened-in additions. A lot of this modern creativity and engineering goes beyond the actual addition itself. If you look closely at this full room extension on the back of this Cyclone toy hauler, you'll notice there are no metal corner or roof poles. Rather than metal framework, these additions are supported by inflatable tubes, which make the whole unit lighter and easier to set up and take down. Where and how they add this extra sleeping space, I guess, is up to the imagination of the designer, and no more is this evident than on these next two examples. First is the Forest River Novo, with its added nest, as they call it. It's a complete enclosed tent that sits on top of the roof of the Novo and adds extra sleeping area beyond the normal interior space. And you can bet the kids love this. On the same note, we found the same type standalone tent enclosure even mounted on the roof of a Jeep. So, as we were saying, Canvas additions are only limited to the creative minds of designers and engineers. Coming up after the break, we'll check out a few more innovative pop-ups and pop-outs from simple to extreme. We'll be right back. Aquacam toss-ins, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. I know, you can't wait to get back out and enjoy some RV. Well, how about on your next trip, you take a brand new GoPower portable solar power system with you? You can. Together with our partners at GoPower, we're giving away a portable GoPower system that includes a 130 watt portable solar panel, inverter, extension cords, and more. The contest starts April 5th, and to enter, just visit our website at rollonontv.com and click on the contest link. 
Welcome back. Like we were saying earlier, some ways of adding additional space can be as simple as a pop-up roof that gives you a few more inches of headroom. Two, a pop-up roof that can not only increase headroom, but also add additional sleeping space, like we see on this Heimer Class B motorhome. So, how creative and extreme can canvas additions go? Let's check in with Jeff Johnston, who seems to have found one trailer manufacturer that lets you decide how many additional rooms you want to add. For a somewhat different camping experience, if you're going to go off-road, get into some really rugged places and take it all with you in comfort, there's an Expedition trailer. This is from Crux Expedition Trailers. This is the model 1610. And what you see here is the way it goes down the road. Everything is all packaged together. All the cabinets and so forth uh, contain all of the goodies for the, for the trailer. Now when you get to the site, it unfolds in a number of different ways. If you're gonna be spending a whole bunch of time, like several days, you can unfold the entire unit that folds out to 211 square feet approximately. If you're just gonna be overnighting, you do stage one, which is more or less uh, the, the top sleeping tent that opens up on top and a little annex on the back. And then if you're gonna be spending a little more time or you wanna expand a little bit more, you can add the side awning on the side and maybe one of the little rooms. And if you're gonna be spending it several days, you do the entire suite of rooms. That gives you the trailer with the sleeping space up on top, a large tent space on the side, a little annex on the end that lets you have a place to put, say, a portable shower or you know, a toilet or something like that. And there's a space on the back that has room for, say, a couple of cots if you're going to have guests coming sleeping with you. And this unit is designed strictly for heavy-duty use. Dual independent suspension axles, um, uh, super heavy-duty hitch assembly. Uh, the frame and all, it's, it's all galvanized or otherwise treated for rust resistance. Uh, this is really a unit that, that is unlike most of the tent trailers that you'll see out there. It takes a few more minutes to set up, but like anything else, once you've done it a couple of times, a unit like this Crux Expedition trailer uh, can provide a type of comfort and convenience and living, livability out on the, on the most rugged trails you can imagine. It's a little different, and it's meant to be. Well, as you can see, we weren't kidding when we said, when it comes to RV canvas extensions, things are popping out all over. By the way, if you happen to run across any unique canvas additions in your travels, post a photo on our Facebook page, and if you have the most unique example, we'll send you one of our Rolling On TV coffee mugs. Forest River, we not only build great RVs, we build award-winning RVs. Check out our complete product line at forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Hi, Michelle and Lori from Rolling On TV. We're here to tell you a story today about our two fur babies, Abby and Angel, who are about a year and a half old now. About a year and a half old now. We have always crated them. They're very comfortable in their crates. It's their little safe spot. And we bring the crate with us wherever we go camping. And this particular time, we were going out on a little errand. So what did we do? We thought that we could um, give them a try outside of the crate while we were away. Mm -hmm. And what we came back to is what this story is all about. So stay tuned. Hey guys, what you up to? Oh, 
no, what happened? Well, looks like a new tabletop is in order. This one doesn't look repairable. Our friends at RecPro, located in the RV capital of the world, also known as Elkhart, Indiana, develop, manufacture, and import and store vast quantities of RV products. Everything from RV furniture to appliances to, well, most anything like tabletops. Check them out at recpro.com. Now we can go to the trailer and see if it fits. And so, here we are. A new collar. Tabletop. Abby, I told you not to do it. But Angel, it was fun. It tasted good. Well, I want to say to everyone I'm sorry that that happened. But um, we, we promised that we wouldn't do that again. And, and thank you, Rec Pro, for getting us out of trouble. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Rec Pro. <laughs> so, until next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye, it's been fun. <laughs> so that's our story. And we really want to thank Rec Pro for helping us out with that tabletop. Michelle and Laurie. For rolling on TV. Enjoy the journey. Am I glad I used AquaCam? Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. AquaCam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Join Rolling On TV in supporting care camps to ensure that children with cancer can experience the healing power of camping at these special oncology camps. If you've never heard of care camps, Now's the time to visit our website and learn all about this great organization and the work they do for these deserving children. Also, stay tuned and see how you can win a specially customized 2021 Forest River Nobo travel trailer with the proceeds going directly to Care Camps. To learn all about Care Camps and how you can win this Super Nobo, visit RollingOnTV.com. Several years ago, I built a garage to store our motorhome and my restoration projects in, but eventually the garage was full and I needed more room. I had space behind the garage for another structure, and my thoughts were to construct an RV carport in that space. The dimensions for our structure are 30 feet long, 14 feet wide, and 12 feet tall. I no sooner got the lot cleared and the building materials arrived. Now let me show you just how easy it is to construct a VersaTube steel frame RV carport. Check with your local building inspectors about building codes where you live. With the ground level, lay out the base rails. They should be spaced building width apart from outside to outside dimensions for your structure. Join all the base rail components as shown in the instructions. Keep the swag joints even in length and fasten the swag joints using two self-drilling screws per joint on top of the base rails. Position the base rails the correct distance apart from each other. Measure across the diagonals to check for square. This is an important step, so adjust the base rails until the diagonal dimensions are equal. You have the option to have a concrete slab poured or to anchor the base rails to the ground using concrete piers. To save some money on the project, I decided to anchor the structure to the ground using concrete piers. 
Mark the location of the base rails and the anchor holes on the ground and move the base rails aside. Dig holes at each anchor point for the concrete. Check with your local building codes for frost line depth. Move the base rails back into position and check the measurements again. Now drop a VersaTube 30 inch rebar into each hole. Mix and pour concrete into the holes up to ground level. Double check your measurements prior to the concrete setting up. We let the concrete set up overnight and everything looks good. Today our goal is to get the roof and wall frame assemblies put together. Let's get started right now. Roof wall frame assembly. On the ground assemble one peak, two rafters, two side posts, and two height extensions if required. Before you fasten the joints with screws, take a measurement across the top and bottom of the assembly as shown in the instructions. It is very helpful to drive stakes into the ground at the width of the building and use them to set the dimension at the bottom of the assembly. Now fasten the joints with number 12 by 3 quarter inch self drilling screws. Four screws in the peak to rafter and side post to rafter joints and two screws in the height extension joints if required. You can use the first assembly as a template to assemble the remaining roof wall frame. Installation of corner brackets. Corner brackets must be installed on all side post corners. Make sure it's flush with both surfaces and fasten the bracket on both sides of the assembly with four number 12 by 3 quarter inch self drilling screws per side. Marking the hat channel placement on the frames ahead of time. Once you have the trusses assembled, take time to stack them on top of each other, ensuring that the top of all the frames are squared up and all the joints are lined up. Now, refer to your care package that was emailed to you for the on-center spacing of your hat channel. First, mark the outside locations at the eave corner. Next, mark the on-center spacing according to your care package. Use the on-center marks and center the hat channel vertically as shown in the illustration. Then, mark a line across the trusses locating both edges of the hat channel. Installing roof wall frame sections to the base rails. We're using a ladder to assist us because there's only two people raising the wall sections. Start at one end of the building and place a roof wall frame assembly on the first base rail vertical pin. Repeat this assembly until all roof and wall frame assemblies are installed. Fasten the vertical joints with two screws each. Keep the screw heads away from the outside of the building where sheet metal may be installed. Squaring up your frame. To do this, first check the front and back roof wall sections to make sure they are plumb side to side. If adjustments must be made, you can drive a wooden or metal stake into the ground about 8 feet from the building and use a motorcycle strap or ratchet strap to pull the side post into plumb. Place a clamp on the side post and attach the strap above the clamp. When the front and back sections are plumb side to side, tie two strings from the front side post to the back side post at the bottom and top of the bend radius. These strings will let you see which sections are high, low, or out of plumb. Installation of hat channel purlins on the roof. If you recall, we measured and marked where our hat channel goes on the roof, so we're going to install the hat channel purlins right now. Make sure that the end wall is plumb and attach angle brackets from the end wall side post to the lower portion of the next frame section. Place a brace on both sides of the building. With the back wall supported, you can measure and note the distance from one frame to the next at the base rail and use that dimension to position the frames at the top of the building as you install the hat channel purlins. Attach the hat channel to the frame with number 12 by 3 quarter inch self drilling screws. See the illustrations in the instructions for purlin locations and joint details. Installing horizontal side metal panels. If any sheet metal is being installed on the eave sides of the structure, 
Installation of said eave metal will need to be completed before roof metal installation begins. Start your first run of sheet metal panels at the eave corner of the building. Start at the back of the building. The sheet metal panels have an underlap and an overlap edge. The underlap edge is a complete rib with a small flange. The overlap edge is a partial rib. The underlap edge will always be placed to the top and the overlap edge to the bottom. Use number 12 by 1 inch painted self drilling screws to install sheet metal panels. Installing eave trim on horizontal sides. The eave trim for your building is 3 by 3 and a half inches by 10 feet long. Start the application of the eave trim at the back of the building. Place a 10 foot piece of trim at the eave of the building as shown in the instructions. Square the trim to the building and attach it to the top of the hat channel with number 10 by 7 8 inch pan head self drilling square drive screws. The end of the trim should be flush with the corner trim as shown in the instructions. Repeat on the other side of the building. Installing sheet metal panels on the roof. Place the first panel at the back of the roof. Position the overlap edge of the panel to the rear flush with the carport frame. The lower edge of the panel should be positioned two inches or three inches from the lower edge of the first hat channel or the edge of the corner bracket depending on the length of the panel. Clamp the panel in place once you have it in position. Attach the panel to the hat channel with painted number 12 by one inch self drilling screws with rubber sealing washers. Continue installing panels as you did the first panel. Repeat the assembly for the other side of the carport. Installing the gable trim. Cut two pieces of 10 foot trim in half. Place a screw about every 24 inches into the front surface of the trim. Repeat the assembly for the other side of the carport. Now from another piece of 10 foot trim, cut two pieces 42 inches long to create the peak trim pieces for a 12 foot wide carport. Clip each piece in the front center up to the corner and then clip the back flange to the bend. Then bend the trim to create a gable peak piece of trim. Fasten the trim to the frame with the same screws you use for the roof panels. Installation of the ridge cap. The last step of our project is to install the ridge cap. Follow the instructions that came in the installation manual to install the ridge cap properly. That's all there is to installing your VersaTube RV carport. If you get a couple friends to help, it can be done in a couple of weekends. If you don't feel comfortable installing it yourself, you can find a local builder who can do it for you. For more information on this RV carport or other DIY steel building kits, visit www.versatube.com. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. For more information on anything you've seen on the program, along with additional videos, stories, and news, plus some great contests, visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. And remember, you can also watch Rolling On TV on Roku, Amazon Fire, Vimeo, and YouTube, as well as on any of our station's streaming media services. For complete coverage information, click on the Where to Watch link on our website. As usual, this has been another fun production. They're good. Well, I want to say to everyone I'm sorry that that happened, but um, we, we promised that we wouldn't do that again. And, and thank you, Recro, for getting us out of trouble. <laughs> Bye -bye.